Uh, Dr. Robin Gibb is our next uh, presenter. She is a professor in the Department of Neuroscience at the University of Lethbridge. Her research ranges from how both prenatal, even preconception experience influence brain development to how to out improve outcomes for kindergarten children. She's published more than 70 peer reviewed journal articles and perhaps crucially, because she supplied this in her bio, she is the grandmother of seven. Dr. Gibb. Thank you for that introduction. Uh, I also wanna express my appreciation for having been invited to participate in this symposium today. It's an exciting opportunity to share the work that we're doing here in the community of Lethbridge. First slide, please. I don't see my slides. Oh. Okay, so I've entitled the talk for today, Play for Success, It's All Fun and Games, and I hope you'll see why as we get into it. I wanna start by acknowledging uh, my colleague, Dr. Claudia Gonzalez in the kinesiology department, who has been a major part of what I'm gonna share with you today. And we've also uh, done some collaborative work with Dr. Noella Piquette in the education department at the University of Lethbridge. Next slide, please. Okay, so I wanna give you a little bit of history behind what we're doing and how we got to where we are. And it all started in 2012 when Alberta Education announced that they were gonna do a provincial scan on kindergarten children to determine whether or not we were as well prepared as we hoped they were uh, as far as starting school in Alberta. So this, this particular instrument that they use, the early development instrument, has been used widely across Canada in other jurisdictions as well, in the US and even in Europe. And people have started to get an understanding about how well children are prepared for the academic career ahead of them. So this particular instrument looks at five developmental domains for children, physical health and well-being, social competence, emotional maturity, language and thinking skills, as well as communication and general knowledge. Next slide, please. Okay, so in 2013, because I'm a developmental neuroscientist and very interested in brain development, partly because I do have grandchildren, I decided to join a newly formed early years coalition here in Lethbridge. At that time, the Alberta government had funded the ability for parents and other, other interest groups regarding family and children to come together and have an opportunity to share resources and ideas regarding how we can support our youngest citizens. So I decided to join that coalition. It was one in about a hundred in Alberta. And after I joined, we were invited, a small portion of that coalition were invited up to Edmonton to meet with members of the Harvard Center of the Developing Child, their Frontiers of Innovation team. So along with the Alberta government and the Palix Foundation, they put on this little, uh, workshop and they identified three communities in Alberta that looked as though they were showing innovative practices and Lethbridge was one of them. And so we went home with $10,000 to try to figure out a way that we could support the earliest years in a child's development and make sure that our citizens were as best prepared for kindergarten as we could possibly make them. Next slide, please. Okay, so when we got the results from the EDI, and that was in 2014, we learned that Canada's children, uh, about 25.4% of them are experiencing some difficulty in at least one of those domains, and 12.4% are experiencing difficulty in more than one domain. So only 62.2% of children in Canada are developing appropriately. When we look at Alberta, our numbers are even lower. So in Alberta, we had 28.9% of our children having difficulty in one or more of those areas of development and 14.7% uh, having difficulty in two or more areas of development. We also got our information for our community. 
And while the community in large looks like about the same as the Alberta average, we found that we had a community within Lethbridge where 41.2% of our children were having difficulty in one area of development and an additional 25.1 were showing difficulty in at least two areas of development. So only 33.7% of those children were developing appropriately. Next slide, please. So I, at this, <clears throat> excuse me, at the same time I had applied for my tax funding for my, my graduate students and I had them go into the literature and come up with some games that looked as though it helped develop executive function, which we know can support academic success. So in 2014, I had the assistance of my two wonderful graduate students, Alona Harker and Sarah Raza, going through the literature with me and we chose games from the primary literature, as I said, that were reported to make a difference as far as executive function goes in children. Next slide, please. So regarding executive function, we know that in order for people to be successful in school and successful in life, it is important to have these skills well developed. They are supported by the prefrontal cortex. And one of the key periods in life when you can develop executive functions rapidly is in the preschool period. So We've also went through the literature and determined that executive function seemed to be more important for school readiness than even IQ. And they also predict math and reading competency throughout the school years. But the good news for us is you can train executive function. Next slide, please. So in reporting from the literature, it appears that adults who were tested as children between the ages of three and 11 that showed they had poor self-control as adults are more likely to be affected by stress, have more loneliness and suffer from mental health and physical issues. We know that they also earn less money and they commit more crimes. And the studies that I'm reporting were studies that were all controlled for IQ, for gender and socioeconomic status. So a paper was published in 2011 by Terry Moffat and his colleagues, and Terry Moffat would be considered a neuroeconomist. He studies how changes in brain in society can make a difference for society. So he came up with the notion that if we made even small improvements in executive function, this could translate into vast improvements in health, wealth, and a lower crime rate if we're looking at an entire nation. Next slide, please. So what we attempted to do was to improve child outcomes by improving executive function. And how we decided to do this was by working with the adults who work with children. So adults being the parents, the educators, caregivers, teaching them about the importance of executive function, and then teaching them that if you play particular games with these children, you can actually make a difference in the executive function performance of the children. The reason we did it were children uh, was because children in Lethbridge were, were suffering. And we, we started this in the city of Lethbridge and some of the rural areas in Southern Alberta. We focused on preschool classrooms to start with and then childcare facilities after that. We were able to attain another $35,000 from the Palix Foundation to help support our initial research. And when we, we got going on it and it started to show that we were making a difference, we applied for funding from an anonymous donor in Calgary and we received that money, but there was a stipulation that the city of Lethbridge or some, some other community group would have to also support this research. So we went to the city and we asked them if they would be interested in supporting us and they agreed to it, as did the University of Lethbridge. Next slide, please. So the program we started in 2015 was called the Building Brains and Futures Program. And our funders were the University of Lethbridge, the City of Lethbridge Family, Community and Social Supports Group, and this anonymous donor. So over the, uh, the, year, the next three years, we tested 100 children and their, their families also participated with us. And we got a baseline for those children for their motor and cognitive functions at the beginning of the academic year. Then they had this enrichment program that took place at school. 
And then we did post enrichment testing in June. We expanded from two classrooms, St. Mary's and Westminster, onto the Opacusson Early Intervention Society and Sunny South, where they also had preschool classrooms. Next slide, please. So these were the results from our motor and cognitive tests. We had a little test where, where uh, children were invited to build a Lego model, and I think you can kind of see that in the picture over on the right-hand side of the slide. And we placed Lego pieces on the table, and we filmed them as they assembled that Lego model. Over time, after the exposure to the games, the children showed a significant improvement in their Lego building accuracy. We also called out different colored Fruit Loops and had them pick them up in order, and they also showed an improvement in their ability to do that after exposure to the games. Uh, we had another block building game and they showed significant improvement in their accuracy. But one of my favorite games is what we called the grass and snow game. And in this case, the child is a place, there's two pieces of paper placed in front of the child. And when the experimenter says snow, the child is expected to touch the green square. And when the experimenter says grass, they're expected to touch the white square. So it is a test sort of like the Stroop test in psychology, where you have to inhibit your natural inclination to touch the square that looks most like the object that had been called out. So they showed significant improvement in that as well. And indeed, they also showed uh, improvement in time as far as building those little Lego models. The time it took them to assemble it went down significantly. Next slide, please. We also did the standard ages and stages questionnaire with the children who were involved in the program. We did a pre-test and a post-test. And ages and stages, is a, there is an age uh, increment that is accounted for in this particular questionnaire. So as the children are about six or seven months older at the end of the school year, it takes into account that they have aged that much. So what you would expect is these bars would be exactly the same one across the other if we hadn't made a difference with the programming that we were using. And I hope you can see in the domains of communication, problem solving, and personal social skills, the post-test children all went up in their scores and it was significant. Now on the, uh, the, the right-hand side of the table, you'll see uh, the social emotional domain and it goes down post-test, but that happens to be the right direction. That shows us that children are doing better after they've learned to play these games and had lots of opportunity to play the games with a caregiver or an adult or an educator in their lives. Next slide, please. We moved on from there to change into a Building Brains Together group. And this, as a group, we decided that we needed to really get this information in the hands of parents because we found that it made such a big difference for the children we were working with. We really wanted to be sure that parents understood how easy it is to have a positive impact on their children. So uh, in this phase of the funding, we had uh, an anonymous donor, offered to fund us again. City of Lethbridge gave us $150,000 this time to uh, spread the word. And we went through the community and started offering activities uh, out in parks and anywhere families gathered. Next slide, please. So we partnered with 10 family-based organizations and both of our school divisions here in Lethbridge. We set up our tent, and I hope you can see in the bottom left-hand side of the slide, our little tent that has the Building Brains logo on it. Uh, we set up the tent and we invited children and their families to come and play with us. We found about 35 different locations we could set up in the city where we had nice turnout from parents and their children. And we did that even after the pandemic started. So I hope you can also see in that little picture at the bottom of the slide, we have hula hoops spaced six feet apart. So children were spaced apart pro appropriately while they were playing these games with us. While we were there, we were able to provide information and resources to more than 4,000 families over the course of 2019 and 2020. And we also had a graduate student uh, who was doing her master's degree with us devise a pandemic survey 
to look at family stress. So Francis Pope put out this online survey for families to respond to talking about what it is they were looking for to support their families during the pandemic and how we could help. And remarkably, one of the key things that parents reported was that they were looking for activities to do with their children. And so the program that we were promoting turned out to be beneficial. Since April 2020, we provided nearly 3,000 brain building kits to families who are accessing the food banks in the Lethbridge area. So we were working in conjunction with them to make sure that as families were getting food, they were also getting the opportunity to engage with their children by providing them with high quality activities that we know can make a difference in brain development. Next slide, please. So for the, the uh, present, when once the pandemic started, we had to have a way we could reach parents. So we decided to put together online training for parents, caregivers, educators. And we came up with several PowerPoint sessions that we now offer one every week. And then they, the parents or the adults get lots of interaction with the possible games that you can play if you're supporting these particular functions. And we have a five week course that we're working with right now. And we hope to expand it to about 15 courses over the next few months. We also came up with the Brain Architect course, level one for parents. It's simple, it only takes an hour to go through, through and you can sign up for it on our website. We've had lots of interest from people and a lot of people reporting that they didn't know that about child brain development. Uh, we're working on art architect levels two through five coming along. And we also received just recently a three-year contract with the city of Lethbridge to continue to provide our services. So they rated us as being moderate as far as a need in the community for wellness and supporting wellness in families. Uh, just recently, Claudia and I applied for a grant to the Can Government of Canada, and this grant was aimed at improving child outcomes uh, and early learning practices by really focusing on the child care community. So we're hoping that that $3 million comes through because we believe we could make a difference for how people interact with children when they're with them. So our goal is that in 20 years from now, we hope that we will be able to reduce homelessness in our community and addictions by improving executive function skills in our children, creating opportunities for health and wealth for them as they go through life and better life success. So at the very end of this, uh, this PowerPoint, I have a testimonial from a grandmother whose grandson went through our program. And I'd like to hear what, uh, hear, I'd like you all to hear what she had to say about this. <clears throat> Can't hear her. I don't know if it's going to work. I can tell you what she said, but it's more impressive to hear it from someone who has had that impact of seeing their child develop their executive function skills and share it amongst the family connection. And, uh, and she was really quite impressed with how he transformed from a child who had problems with self-regulation and emotional regulation to a child who was very, very considerate of others and also considerate of uh, any issues he was having, understanding that there was probably other ways he could solve the problem. So uh, I guess we don't get to hear from grandmother, but uh, she, she really did make a case that she believes every school in Alberta should do this and every school in Canada should do this so children have a better, uh, a better future as far as their academic and their life career goes. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Gibb, and kudos to you for doing this because sh surely the, the you know intellectual and emotional development in early childhood is super important. I have a couple of quick questions. Um, how how wide do you think the window is the window of opportunity to use games to enhance development? A year, two years, what? Oh no, no, we have. Uh, 
we, we know that there is a window between about two and five where there's rapid development of these executive function skills and games seems to be a perfect way to promote it. But there's another window and it starts at about 12 years of age and it goes right through into adulthood. And so between 12 and 25, you can build executive function skills. So the next thing our group is doing is working on a program of games for adolescents to help build executive function skills. In case they didn't get a chance to develop them early on, we believe we can still make a difference for them in the adolescent years and early adulthood as well. And you know what, maybe even late adulthood. And you know, if you're motivated, yes, indeed, you can build executive function skills. Thanks again, Dr. Gibb. Yeah, that you're was welcome. great.